Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid and today's lesson is about an accent and it's an accent that we hear a lot in the UK, especially in the south of the country um, and it's called the Cockney accent um, and it's centred around the London area, uh, London and the South East so it spreads quite a long way out from London as well. Um, and I don't know if you've ever heard of these actors, Michael Caine, Barbara Windsor. Um, they are actors whose natural accent is the Cockney accent because they both uh, grew up in the London area. Um, so they, they grew up speaking the Cockney accent. So the Cockney accent is like a regional accent, really. It just happens to be the regional accent for, for the capital city of England. So um, that's just like any other regional accent. You could have a Yorkshire accent, a Liverpool accent, a Birmingham accent. London has its own regional accent as well. So rather than RP, receive pronunciation, which is the accent that English teachers usually teach people who are learning English, um, if, if they're teaching them British English, that is. Of course, American teachers will teach in an American accent, etc. Australian teachers will teach in an Australian accent. But if, if I'm teaching English, because I'm in the UK, I would teach the RP, Received Pronunciation, accent. Uh, but um, the Cockney accent, it, it's very useful to know about, because if you happen to be in London, or you may be watching a film or a television program where people are speaking with this accent and you may uh, at first have difficulty understanding what the person is saying. Um, I had a student a while ago who was from Italy um, and he had started working in a company and he told me um, I. I can't understand my boss very well when he speaks to me. Um, I, I can't, I have to keep asking him to repeat and it's getting embarrassing. So I, I sort of guessed his boss might have a Cockney accent and said, well, does he do this? Does he do that? Oh yeah, that's what he sounds like. So I said, okay. Um, he's probably speaking with a Cockney accent. So there are lots and lots of people in the London area who speak with this accent. Uh, traditionally, it's been associated with a kind of working class accent. Um, but nowadays, it's, it's much more complicated than that. Um, there are people working in very professional jobs who also have Cockney accents. Um, I had a Chinese student um, at one time from China, uh, and uh, but I noticed she had some sort of, she sounded a little bit Cockney when she spoke English. So I asked her about that and she worked in finance, I think in investment banking. And she said, oh, my boss, it's my boss, he's Cockney. So I, I sort of hear him speaking and it influences me. So someone in, in a sort of very high professional job could have a Cockney accent. So there's no difference really nowadays. Uh, but um, the thing is, if your boss speaks with a certain accent, there is um, a tendency to, to try to speak like them, just to be able to relate to them well in your work. So that does happen. Depending on who you're with, your accent can change. So it happens to me as well. Okay, so, so what I've done here, I've just chosen six aspects or features of the Cockney accent just to explain what they are and to demonstrate how they sound so that when you do hear a Cockney speaker, even if it's just in a film or a television programme or on the radio, you will 
know what you're hearing and you'll think, ah, OK, I know what that should be, uh, what that word is, um, because you know how the Cockney accent changes some of the consonant sounds and um, makes some other little changes to what we would call RP, the standard in, uh, British pronunciation. So here's a little summary then of the Cockney accent and some of the main features. So first of all, the TH sound, which uh, a lot of people, if you're learning English, you may not have TH in your own native language. And so people have difficulty pronouncing th, th, th like that. Um, but for some reason, uh, Cockney speakers don't bother to pronounce th like that. They either, uh, depending on what the word is, they, they either say f or v. So instead of putting the tongue behind the top teeth for th, 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 they're just putting their top teeth on their bottom lip, f, 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 or v, 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 when they say those words. So what I've done, I've written some words phonetically uh, and you might like to try to guess what, what the actual word is. If I say things, things, if a Cockney person says things, and the F is replacing the TH sound, then it's really things. Okay. Things. So things. And you will often see Cockney speak, speech written down like this. It would actually be written this way to suggest the Cockney accent. So it's useful for when you're reading things as well or reading things as well. Okay, so that's things, things. And similarly with this one, think, I think, I'm not sure, but I think, so I think, oops, sorry, I'll just repair that. There we are, sorry. Um, okay, so think, think. So that's really TH there, I think. Okay. Now this one's interesting because this is a word when it's spelt with an F. Free, as in freedom. Are you free? Or we're free. We want to be free to do what we like. So that is a word in normal spelling, but um, the confusion is that a Cockney person might say free when they actually mean the number three, three. So free, they could be saying the number three. Okay. Uh, then this one, with, so instead of the V, if you put TH, you've got with with. So with, with, like that, not with. Right. This one, weather, weather. So the V is in the middle there. So make that TH, weather. So that could be either that kind of the weather. Is it raining? Is it sunny? Or it could be that kind of weather, whether or not we go, whether or not. So weather, weather, rather than weather. Okay, this one, um, can you guess this one? Other, other, if you say other, other, you get, but I, I was spelling it phonetically, so it's not so easy to recognize other, 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 okay? And finally for this first one, again, this, this is a word as it's written, fought, it's the past tense of the verb to fight. 
Yesterday, I fought somebody. I had a fight with somebody. But it's if somebody, if a Cockney person says this, they may mean not they fought, but they thought. They thought something. They were thinking. They thought. So that's again like free and three. Thought and thought can be ambiguous. It could mean one thing or something else. Okay, so that's that one. So that's one of the main differences. Uh, the next one is when there's a, a letter T often in the middle of a word, uh, but it's not pronounced in the Cockney accent. This is called the glottal stop. Uh, the, the glottis is in the throat here. So if you don't pronounce a T and you've got this word here, if you think of the missing T, that word is water. But instead of saying water, the cop in the Cockney accent, it's water, water, uh, 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 and, and something happens in the throat. So instead of making the T sound t -t 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 with your tongue in, the, in your mouth, you're going uh, 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 down here in your throat. Water, water, water. So that's why I've put the apostrophe there to show the missing T. So that's water. Do you know this one? Matter, matter. So that, that would be double T. Matter. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Matter, 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 like that. Okay. Do you recognize this word? Better, better. Are you feeling better? So again, double T, better, 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 like that. Okay. This word, probably quite easy as it's a longer word with just one letter missing. Computer. So that's computer. 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 Some people don't, um, some Cockney speakers are more, uh, have a stronger accent than others. So some Cockney speakers, if they're working in an office, um, they might say computer because it sounds maybe more professional. But some who are very relaxed about their accent, very informal, they might say computer, computer. Um, so that's another one to listen out for computer. Uh, this one, can you guess what this word is? So later, later is later, later. So if you say, see you later, see you later, see you later, or some people just say later, later, <laughs> and it means see you later. Okay. And then finally for this one, one T missing. So reality, if you've heard of reality television, which is not very real, to be honest, the ones I've seen, it's not really reality, but it's about real people, but in rather strange situations sometimes. But that would be pronounced reality, reality, rather than reality. Okay, so that's the glottal stop, replacing the T sound. Okay, so next one. The letter L, which if you make the sound of the L, la 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 la, your tongue touches the roof of your mouth, la 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 la, and your mouth is open slightly, depending what vowel sound. Li 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 li, lu 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 lu. Uh, you'll, you'll have a different shape of your mouth, but it will be slightly open for la, la, la. Uh, but the Cockney accent, can you imagine? You couldn't make it up, could you, really? You couldn't invent this, that the, the L sound is changed to a wa, 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 like that, like the letter W, wa. So this word here, 
that's that W is correct. That's part of the real spelling. But this W uh, is representing a double L. So that word is well, well. Are you well? Are you feeling well? But in the Cockney accent, it's well, well, well. So the tongue doesn't do any L sound inside the mouth. The, the, the lips are just pulled back together again. You start with w, with this word, well, well, like that. And the tongue is just sitting in the mouth doing nothing. Okay. So the opposite of well is ill or ill, 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 ill. And I'm using my tongue there, ill, ill, ill. But if you say it like a Cockney speaker, it's ill, ill, ill. You're looking ill. You're looking ill today, ill. So like that. Okay, next one. So the W becomes an L. So that word is film, film, la la la, film. But in the Cockney accent, it's film, 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 like that, pulling the lips together. Right, this one, W, becomes L. Deal, negotiating a deal an agreement, a deal, but in Cockney it's deal, 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 like that. Okay, can you guess what this word is? If you think of an L here instead of the W. Built, so it would be B-U-I-L-T, when you build something to build, it was built in a certain year. So built, 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 like that, instead of built, built. And finally, something that you drink, not with the W, but with an L, milk, milk. But the Cockney accent, it's pronounced milk, milk, like that, milk, okay. Okay, so on to number four. This is where the letter H at the beginning of a word is dropped, not pronounced. So the H when we blow air out of our mouth to make the H sound. Um, so and the apostrophe shows the missing H and is hand. Im is him. Him, over there, that man, him. Hello is hello. Ed is head, so H-E-A-D. Ed, head. Er, that's a woman over there. Have you seen, have you seen er, er, instead of her? And then if you need some food, you're hungry instead of hungry, okay? Hungry. So that's fairly simple, just missing the H at the beginning of the words. And number five, um, ing, the ing sound at the end of a lot of uh, mostly verbs. Um, the G is dropped, so you just get in, working, cleaning, reading, cooking, talking. So not talking, but talking. No bother to mm, 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 do the ng mm sound in the throat. Okay. Right. And then number six, um, instead of, uh, you may have found words beginning str difficult to pronounce when you're learning English. Str, str, str because it's a combination of sounds. But Cockney speakers, some of them, uh, actually make it even more difficult, really, uh, by putting a sh, shtra, shtra, like that. So instead of street, you get street. 
instead of strike, when people go on strike, they stop working, they're protesting about their employment rights or something like that, they're stopping work, a strike, industrial strike, um, is pronounced strike, strike, okay? Uh, if something looks rather strange, uh, it's strange, strange, like that. If someone's very strong, strong man or woman, strong. I'm slightly exaggerating because I'm not used to saying it, so, but that's how I've heard people say it, strong. And here it is in the middle of a word, illustrate, illustrate, an example to illustrate. So illustrate, illustrate. So I don't know why, but that's another feature of, of Cockney. Okay, and then we have a few little things that happen, uh, sort of non-standard elements. So this ain't, which you may have heard, especially in, if you're in the UK, if someone says, I ain't, or you ain't, or we ain't, or they ain't, it means I am not, it isn't, he isn't, she isn't, we aren't, we are not, they aren't. So ain't can be used for all the pronouns, first, second, and third pronouns, singular and plural. In that sense, it's nice and easy because you don't have to think am or is or are, it's the same for all of them, ain't, but it's a non-standard form, okay, so that's used a lot. Um, this is a kind of a abbreviation, so if you say isn't it, oh it's hot today, isn't it, um, you might hear it abbreviated to in it, it it's, hot, it's hot today, in it. It's hot today, in it, um, in it. So in it often appears at the end of a statement with a question mark, expecting someone to answer uh, to see if they agree with you. In it, in it. So here's another one, another contraction. To know, to know, which is for uh, short for don't know. This isn't only the Cockney accent. I remember as a child, and I come from further north, I used to say dunno. Uh, so other parts of the country also use this. Um, but it's not, it doesn't sound very, it has a way of sounding not very enthusiastic. If somebody says mm, dunno, dunno, uh, what, what are you doing at the weekend? Mm. To know, to know, not no interest, no enthusiasm. So to know sounds a bit not very polite, uh, not very interested, um, not very enthusiastic or positive. It's a bit negative sounding. Okay, um, and then finally, a kind of grammatical switch, um, where instead of saying to someone, "Why were you late?" It should be were. Why were you late? Um, a lot of Cockney speakers say, why was you late? So it's the wrong form of the verb to be, was, were, in the past. Why was you? Why was you late? Uh, it should be, why were you late? And then if the person replied to explain why they was late, why they were late, um, they might say, we was waiting for the bus. And again, we was is, is not the correct form. It should be we were. We were waiting for the bus and it didn't come or it broke down. So switching, changing uh, were to was in both cases there is one of the other things that happens. Okay, so that's an overview of some main aspects of the Cockney accent. There are other things like slightly different vowel sounds, but that, that's a lot more 
that would take a much longer lesson and uh, it's harder to explain I think as well. So, but listen out for Cockney speakers and see if you uh, recognise some of these features when they're speaking. Uh, they might be uh, some American films, you might have a Cockney speaker playing the villain, for example. Often the British actor is hired to play the villain in, in an American film and sometimes they have a Cockney accent. So. Uh, or they can have an RP accent as well, and they can be an even worse villain. So there you are. Um, okay, so finally, just one little example of uh, a title of an, a musical, a theatre uh, production, which um, came, started in 1960, or it appeared on the London stage in 1960. And this is the title, the exact title. Things ain't what they used to be. And there's a song as well um, you can listen to, the song of the title. Um, I don't think I can sing it because I think it's still in copyright. So I don't want to, uh, I want, don't want to get us into trouble. But the title I can give you without the music Things ain't what, meaning what they used to be. Things are not what they used to be. Times have changed, as times always do. Things change as time goes on. So that's the title of a very popular uh, musical that was on the London stage in 1960. And some of the songs from it are still very famous, especially the title song. So uh, see if you can find that to listen to. Right, so I hope that's been uh, an interesting lesson for you. And uh, do go to the website, ingvid.com, where there will be a quiz on this subject. And thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now.